Apache Commons Lang is a Java library that I use in almost all my projects. This video will be about three methods common to all Java objects, toString, equals, and hashcode, and three classes Apache Commons Lang provides to make your overridden implementations better, toString builder, equals builder, and hashcode builder. First, toString builder. Use this to implement your overridden toString methods. ToString builder makes it easy, readable, and flexible. Typically, your toString would use raw string formatting like this. But I suggest you no longer implement your overridden toString with raw string formatting like this. My favorite way is with toString builder, reflection to string, a single line long. This one line picks up all the fields and their values. Your toString will always be up to date if you add or remove fields. Now let's see all the styles that come with Apache Commons Lang. Here's the order that I generally find them useful. Short prefix to string style is good when the class simple name is enough. You don't need the package name. Multi-line to string style is useful when the fields don't fit without wrapping on a single line. The only disadvantage to this one is that usually the package and hash code are not relevant. Simple toString style is good for debugging when the context makes it obvious what the class and field names are. Like in this case, a date and a name. No class name to style string is good when the context makes it clear the type of object but some of the fields would be ambiguous without labels. This could be in a log file. Default to string style uses the full class name and the hash code. These are noise in most cases. No field name uses the fully qualified class name, the hash code, but no labels before the field values. JSON to string style makes it look like JSON. Notice the class name is not present. Maybe reflection doesn't work well for your use case. You can use the append method overrides instead. The append methods take a label and a value. Typically, this is a field name and a field value, but it can be anything you want. So let's go to the to string append demo to see a concrete example. Here we can control which fields are used in the toString output and the labels that are used for the fields. Next is equals builder. The object equals method determines if two references are logically equivalent. This is particularly important in set collections for methods like contains. Equals builder has reflection methods that check if all the fields are equivalent at runtime. This is the simplest way to implement an overridden equals method. This particular call specifies the field names to exclude which is an empty set, so we don't exclude any fields. If reflection doesn't work well for your use case, you can use the append overloads, just like two string builder. Since equals takes two parameters, the append methods take two parameters, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Using append with equals builder is a little more work than to string builder. The documentation suggests that you perform the following tests before calling equals builder. Test the right-hand side for null. Test for the same reference. 
test for the same type, cast, and then call equals builder. Finally, hash code builder. An object's hash code helps determine which bucket it is put into for fast searching and retrieval. If two objects are logically equal, their hash codes must be equal. Sets internally keep their elements in buckets that are determined by the hash code. When the set is looking for an element, it will go to one bucket at most. So your hash code needs to be consistent with your equals. There's more to it than this, but if your objects support logical equivalents or will be put in sets, implement hash code and equals. Hash code builder has reflection methods to make overriding hash code very simple and always up to date. Here's an example. You specify the object to be reflected upon. The other way to use hash code builder is with the append overloads. You specify which values should be used in calculating the hash code and then call the hash code method. Objects that test logically equal through the equals method must have the same hash code. It is usually a good idea to use all the important fields in generating a hash code. To play it safe, use the same fields in your hash code as your equals. All three, toString builder, equals builder, and hash code builder, make sense to be used internal to the classes they are describing. But probably only toString builder makes sense to also be used in some cases external to the class it is acting on. Comment if you have use cases for equals builder and hash code builder external to the class it is describing.